Hello and welcome back to another one of Forward Camera's camera tutorials. Today we're going to learn how to use this Fujika STX-1. Now, many people might see Fujika and think, hmm, that sounds familiar, that sounds like Fujifilm. Well, you're correct. They just have a different name. Now it's a Fujifilm camera. They went under a bunch of different names. Um, and we're going to talk about this. This camera is actually nice and lightweight. It's um, compact. I, I've really very, very rarely had any problems with these Fuji cameras. Um, and they're really great companions um, on your trip taking photos. Um, 35, these are 35 millimeter SLR cameras. So let's learn how to use this camera. Um, so how does this work? Well, number one, if you want to use a light meter, you got to open up the battery compartment and pop a new battery inside. I will, you know, write down which battery um, inside the description. But for now, just know that you could use a coin to open this and put one inside. And they're very easy to get online. Number two. Um, let's talk about how to attach and detach lenses. Now, use the Fuji Photofilm lens. Um, in this case, it's a Fujinon lens. Um, and again, they're very easy to come by. They're not extremely expensive lenses, which makes this a very good camera for, you know, any sort of person who wants to take photos um, at not a ex really extremely expensive price. And they're very well built. So how do I detach the lens? Well, on the side here, there's a little lever here, there's kind of a button that you hold down and then you counterclockwise turn the lens right, and it pops right off. Um, and, uh, something about lenses, right? We want to make sure that our apertures, right? The little hole that's inside, see that there's no, um, gunk or that there's no sort of, uh, oil on them because they can get stuck. So when you're looking for lenses, you want to make sure it does this nice and smoothly like this one, right? We clean these out and make them nice and neat for our shop. Um, but if you're looking on online somewhere else, um, know that that's something you need to look for and also know, you know, fungus inside the lens, which is gross, which this one doesn't have. It's very nice. So how do we attach the lens? So we look for the red, right? The little red dot and we align it with this little red dot. So I'm going to do it right now with you. You pop the lens on so that they're nice and aligned, right? You see how it goes nice and nicely in and then you rotate it to the right and it clicks and you know that the lens is on so how do we load the camera now we have a battery we have a lens but we need to put our film inside so we have this sort of lock over here so we open it with our hand and you see this you pull and it pops right open um and you what you would do is you keep this up you pop your film canister in here, you lock this down into the top, to, to the bottom of the film canister, and you move the film nice and flush here into the side. And there's a little hole here to put the edge of the film. And you would just, once the film is in there and it's nice and flush, you would crank it one frame and it becomes even more flush and you're ready to go. So you would close it. And on the top over here, there's a, a film, like it tells you what, what um, frame you're on, right? So right now it says S, we were at the very beginning, right? That's when we, it says we basically can start taking photos pretty soon, right? Um, but then it would change to one, two, three, blah, 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 telling you what frame you're taking your photo on. Um, and that's important. Something else is there's a lock, so you don't oopsie daisies, like shoot this off in your backpack, right? This lock turns the camera, from being able to take a photo, but you want it on when you want to take a photo. And how do we take a photo? Number one, well, there's a light meter inside the camera. And this is very important. There's going to be a light meter that tells you whether or not your frame is going to be properly exposed or not, right? So we have to follow that light meter with a battery. It won't work unless there's a battery, but the camera will, by the way. It's not electronic shutter, so the camera will work by itself without a battery, but the light meter won't. So what we do is we switch our aperture to whatever one we want, right? 
So in this case, maybe I want a very, very large aperture at 2.2, or maybe I want a scene with 16, it's sunny outside and I don't, I need a small aperture to let less light in. Um, and then once I set my aperture, if you're doing an aperture like priority, meaning you're keeping the aperture at a certain f-stop, you're keeping it this way, so you have depths of field and you choose that ahead of time, you would choose your shutter speed from one over 700 of a second, right? See, that's 700. Um, all the way down to one half of a second. And then B means um, bulb, which means like ex um, basically holding this down for however long you want the camera open. Um, you set it up on a tripod, say, at night, and you want to take a photo of a cityscape or streaks of light of cars, you might want to put that on B. And that allows you to hold the camera open for however long you want and then open it again or, or close it again, right? To take the photo for the exposure. But normally we're gonna just kind of turn this wheel to whatever shutter speed we want. And you can go the other way around too, right? You hold a shutter speed, like say you're at a soccer game and you wanna take a really fast photo of the players. So maybe you would do it at 700th of a second. And then you might wanna change the depth of field accordingly, right? To get a photo of a fast running player or car or something. So that's up to you, but that gives you an idea. Another thing is on this, on this wheel, there's a little number here and that's your ISO or ASA. That's the film speed. So you set that according to whatever speed the film tells you. And for those of you who are more advanced, you might want to like change that to, to push the film, but that's another discussion. I mean, how do you do that? Well, you would lift this wheel up. So I'm going to show you, you would lift this wheel up a little bit and then you would move this, it rotates, see? And then you lock it down. So I usually do 400 because that's a lot of films use 400, but that's up to you. And then what you do is you, you know, now, now our film, I did this before, but you would cock the shutter, right? It clicks and then take your photo, right? And then you would move to the next frame and so on and so forth. And you would notice that Right, see how this changes to one. Um, the red zone means that it might be, because when you're loading the camera, light touches the film, it might be exposed. So you might wanna just for the safety sake, unless you're artistic type, right? You can trust that once it's on this silver part, that the frame will not be messed up by, you know, you putting the film inside the canister and getting exposed, but it will actually be just your photo. So be careful about that. And this keeps going. So if your film is 24 frames, you stop. If it's 36, you stop whenever it says 36. And when you're ready, you reload the camera, right? Uh, you take the film out. So how do we do that? Well, on the bottom, there's a button. You press down the button, right? You only do this when you want to take the film out. Press down the button. And this is a little lever that comes out, right? It's kind of like a Right, a little area here where we can take our finger and we roll the film back inside, right? We roll, 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 roll. And then finally you'll feel the tension is gone. All of the film went from this side back into the canister. It's safe to take it out. So we just unlock it, right? We unlock the camera again. So how do we do that? Well, we pop this open. It pops right out. We take our film out and then we send it for developing or we develop it ourselves, right? And we want to be careful that we don't get this part dirty. The curtain is very important, right? We don't want to get it dirty or wet, right? Um, that really makes sure that the that the shutter works properly. So don't try not to get anything inside there. Touch it with your with greasy fingers, right? Um, so one thing that I want to talk about with this camera is, and I didn't mention, is the light meter. So the light meter. Some cameras have kind of like a little sort of arrow that goes up and down and you want it centered, but this one actually tells you the speed, right? It tells you the shutter speed is a little LED that goes up and down um, to the correct exposure and you set the exposure accordingly um, with this type of camera. Um, and if you set your aperture, say, and I usually use the aperture because I don't really take photos of very many fast things. So let's just say I want to take a, a photo 
of a countryside or something outside, right? Like I'm at 16, it's very sunny. And then inside the little LED will go boop, 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 right? And it will tell you, okay, well, you know, you need to set the the shutter speed at 250, okay? And it will have a number. Um, that's how you do it for for taking a photo when you set the aperture. But what if you want to go the other way around? Like, what if it's, you know, you want to take a sporting event photo of something fast or like a race car or something? So I would set this first. And then inside, there'll still be that sort of light, right? But you just keep moving. You just do the opposite. You keep moving your aperture until finally the little LED light matches the correct shutter speed. It goes the other way around in reverse. So you could do it. Something else I want to teach you is if you want to check the depth of field, meaning you want to um, push down the aperture manually through the viewfinder, there's a little button here. You could close, look, you could actually see it. Close and open the aperture with your finger, right? If you notice that inside closes and opens. If you want to take a photo on a tripod of yourself or with your friends, right? There's a little timer here. So first we would set our timer. Then we would cock the shutter, right? And then we press this little timer button. Oh, then we press this down, sorry. We press this down. Sorry about that. Gotta wait until it goes down and then I'll show you how to do it. Yeah, see, I'll do it one more time. That was my mistake. So, cut the shutter, you bring this down and then you press this little button here, go to inside the photo and wait and it will actually take the photo. See? Got stuck before, so that was my fault. Um, and that's how you use this camera. It's a very, very simple camera. I really love this type of camera because number one, let's just say your battery dies. It doesn't matter. You could use your phone as a light meter. Um, even if the camera's internal light meter doesn't work, you could use Sunny 16 rule, but the manual sort of cameras that don't have an electronic shutter will just work no matter what. And they, they will last, in my opinion, they last way, way longer. So. That being said, I hope this was helpful. Um, please follow us on Instagram at Forward Cameras, on Twitter at Forward Cameras. Subscribe to our channel, uh, like this video. Um, it really helps support us. And also we have a shop online where we sell cameras just like this, including this one. And it's forwardcameras.com. Thank you so much. Um, please subscribe and uh, stay tuned for more videos.